Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be all about mini bags. I own quite a few mini bags now and I realised a lot of them I haven't touched upon in a review-like capacity on my channel before. So that is what I'm going to do today. I have 10 bags here and they are a mix of brands. So I have Chanel, uh, Chloe, Gucci, Saint Laurent and Furla as well. Oh, and Celine as well. So a mix of brands and what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to be ranking them according to my favourites and my my least favourites. So obviously I still like all these bags because I still own them all but I definitely have my favourites and others which I don't have quite as much love for so I thought it might be helpful to rank them as opposed to just being like they're all great. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm also going to be sharing uh, what can fit in each of them if size is an issue for you and also wear and tear where applicable. Some of these are a bit newer so I can't comment as well however some of them I have had for quite a long time now so I hope you guys enjoy this. I did also want to mention my speech I may be saying a few words a bit funny. Um, I did get lingual braces in for those of you who didn't watch my vlog um, and I am still adjusting to them so that's why but I hope you guys enjoy anyway and let's get started. So I'm going to go in favourite to least favourite so number one through to number ten, ten being least favourite, one being most favourite. Um, so my most favourite is my Chanel Mini which is probably not a surprise to anyone who's watched my channel for a while. I love this bag. I have had it for three years now I want to say, three or four years, something like that and I love it, I use it all the time even now and it's just the perfect little mini bag I think. I love the square size, the square mini is my favourite, I got it in caviar and this combination is my favourite anyway, it's very durable, I love the gold hardware. It's just the perfect little mini bag, I know these aren't so easy to find now but Chanel do release them on I'd say a semi-regular basis, you have to be like quick on it though because they are so popular but I really only have very very good things to say about this bag. It fits more than you think, it goes with pretty much everything, I've worn it casually, I've worn it dressed up, just a really good all-rounder, an absolute classic as well. I can absolutely see myself wearing this in 10-20 years time and just a beautiful beautiful mini bag. My choice for number two might come as a bit of a surprise but this bag has totally totally stolen my heart. So it is the Celine Nano and this is just such a favourite for me. I had to put it in at number two because it's just so great and you know this was, I obviously liked it enough to buy it but it took me a while to get around to buying it and I didn't love it enough to pay full price for it. You know this was definitely a pre-love bag for me. Um, had I known then what I know now in terms of how much I love it, I would have bought it years ago and full price because it's such a good bag. Um, it fits a ton in, like it's really quite deceptive. It is a bit of a bottomless hole but I don't mind that. You can fit a larger wallet in here which for a mini bag is quite unusual and this definitely is on the larger size in terms of mini bags. Um, I've taken the straps off just for the camera um, but it comes with straps so you can wear it cross body, you can just wear it on the shoulder, you can carry it by the handles. I like the look of it every which way and it's great, it's good for travelling, it's good for a day out shopping, it's good for dinner, it's just good for so many different occasions. I personally do think it's a bit of a classic, I know other people are like oh it looks a bit old now um, but I personally love it, it's such a great one and absolutely a favourite for me. Coming in at number three is my rose gold Chanel small flap. I was debating whether to include the small flap because I feel like in Chanel world really the official minis are the rectangle and the square mini um, but I decided to include it because of capacity mainly because it doesn't fit very much and so for me this is definitely a mini bag. Like you can see there, you hardly get any room to put your stuff. I mean a lot of the bag is taken up by like the flap and you know pockets but they're quite thin pockets really so you can't fit that much in here but I love it anyway I love the colour combination I love the chevron I love the iridescent look it's just such a beautiful bag um, I don't know whether I would go for this size otherwise um, for me for this combination the size was absolutely the right call um, I'm not a huge fan of the longer chain length on the rectangle mini so this one does have the shorter chain length like so, so it kind of hits much more at the hip which I prefer. Um, if you're just going for value for money then I would always say go for the minis um, just because this is classified as a classic flap which you can see by the 
presence of a double flap. The minis don't have a double flap, which is why they're not considered classics, which is why the price is a lot lower. So if you're going for value for money, I would absolutely say go for the minis, but if money is no object and you just are dead set on the small flap, I do think it's a really elegant size, perfect for going out to dinner. You can even wear this to events, I think, and um, I particularly love this color combination. Coming in at number four is my Saint Laurent clutch. I absolutely love this bag. This was my go-to summer bag for pretty much any event or party I went to. It is such a functional little clutch. I love it. Obviously, this is more of a clutch wallet on a chain, so you're not going to fit a ton in here, um, but it does fit enough for what I need when I'm going out. I also love the fact that it does have a chain, so if you find yourself with a drink in one hand and then food in another, as I often do, um, you can just pop this on your shoulder, which I love. Do you see the capacity? There is a lot of card slots. I don't know why they put so many in. You have a pocket there, and then you have the bigger zipper pocket there for cash or your phone or whatever you wanna put in there, and then a little bit of space here. So you can't fit a ton in, um, but I can fit in everything that I would want. So I usually carry my phone, my keys, credit card, lipstick, and maybe a travel card. Um, and that's all I really need, and this just does the job. So I love it. Another thing which makes this particularly good for kind of an event clutch is the fact that it is the pebbled leather. So I'm not worrying about, you know, drink spilling or anything like that because it is literally just white clean, even in this paler color, which just makes it very carefree and easy for me. So that is why it is number four. This was such a good buy and I've been loving using it. And coming in at number five and continuing on the Saint Laurent theme is my Saint Laurent Kate bag. This is the newest addition to my collection and it pretty much only wins based on appearance. It's not the most functional in terms of the fact that it is very, very small so really only one if you are a minimalist or like me use it more for evenings out you can get a bigger size as well in the same style so that is also an option um but i just love the look of this bag i think it is quite iconic looking i think it's very striking you know i love the tassel I love the bold YSL, and especially if I think about what's on the market right now, I do think this stands out as just one of the most beautiful designs. I love it. It does come in the smooth leather, and even though it has that beautiful polished look, it isn't overly shiny, and it isn't overly delicate either, so I don't have any scratches on here. You can get a few kind of more whitish marks, um, but again, it's white clean, you know, very, very easy to manage and take care of. And I think this is just a very stunning bag. As you can see, definitely on the small side, so really only the bare essentials. But if you're happy with that knowledge and just want to use it as an evening bag or just very minimal, then I think this is a solid choice. Coming in at number six is the Chanel Rectangle Mini, and the only reason this isn't higher is because I should have got this in the square size. I had not owned a Rectangle Mini before, and now that I have owned it, I can now come to the conclusion that I much prefer the square mini. I prefer the look of it, I prefer the chain length, I just prefer pretty much everything about it. This has the longer chain length, so it's really better suited to wearing crossbody, and I don't really like wearing this bag crossbody, so bit of a, a learning curve for me. Um, I do sort of really adore the look of it though. It's a beautiful colour combination. I love the lambskin. I love the light gold hardware. Um, but I am definitely not a rectangle mini girl. It is square mini all the way. Coming in at number seven is my Gucci Soho Disco and I do feel a little bit bad about placing this so low. I do still really love it and it used to be one of my all time favorites but I do tend to reach for other bags more than I do this one now and even though it's a great choice still for a casual mini bag and for me this is very much a casual bag, I wouldn't really wear it for an evening out or anything like that, it does tick all the boxes in terms of a casual bag. You know, it's quite durable, it's very comfortable to wear and it can fit a lot and it's also just quite a classic design which you know it makes a statement but it's not so in your face um, but I would say that there are just other bags I love the look of a bit more and also maybe even the functionality my Celine Nano I do use for dinner but I also just grab and go and it's so easy because it does have that big opening and I just like the look of it more than my Gucci Soho now so still a very solid bag I think just not one of my absolute favorites anymore 
Coming in at number eight is my Chloe Drew, and this is a bag which I do still really like, but the shine has worn off a little bit. I don't reach this bag as much anymore, mainly because I got the Saint Laurent bag in the exact same color combination, and for events and just evenings out, I do prefer the Saint Laurent bag. I think it just looks a little bit neater. I prefer the clutch style, which you can also you know, use as a shoulder bag. This is obviously only a shoulder bag, and Whenever I'm thinking about matching, you know, my bag to my outfit, I just always seem to reach for the Saint Laurent, um, which is why this is placed so low. It hasn't gone a lot of use or love since I got the Saint Laurent, so it's still a lovely bag, and again, if you like the look of it, there's nothing terrible about it at all. A little bit fiddly to get into, um, but that didn't bother me. I love the look of the lock, so... I was happy to deal with that. Um, it's just not one that I reached for as much as my Saint Laurent, which I think, again, it just looks a bit neater. It seems to suit more outfits in terms of the shape. So still a lovely one, just not a super, super favorite. Coming in at number nine is the Gucci Momot camera bag. This one is actually one that I'm going to be letting go of soon. I do like it, but I did know when I bought my Gucci Momot flap in the nude, I don't know if you can see it there, but I thought I would have to get rid of this just because it's the same color and I didn't think I would reach for this once I had the other one and I was right, I haven't. So there's nothing terribly wrong with this bag. It is a bit on the small side if you're comparing it to the Gucci Soho. I do have a full comparison of all three bags if you do want something in depth, so I will link it down below. Um, and the only reason this doesn't rank higher is because I do think that if you're going to go for a casual bag, I think the Gucci Soho is a slightly better choice. And if you want something a bit more dressy, I think the Gucci Montmartre flap is a really, really great one, which I have been loving. So this one is kind of an in-between, and if that's what you want, if you want versatility, then this probably will suit you better. Um, but for me, it is quite small. I do have other bags that do that better, I think, and as a result, I just haven't been reaching for this quite as much. And coming in at number 10 in last place is my Furla Metropolis bag. I was debating whether to place this last because I know it's the cheapest bag and I didn't want people to think that just because it wasn't like super high end it got ranked lower. The reason I placed it at number 10 is because it's just not very comfortable. So it does have a chain strap, which lots of other bags do. The Chloe Drew has a quite similar chain, but the Chloe Drew I find is quite comfortable. This really digs in though, and I don't know why, maybe it's just my shoulder because I haven't heard anyone else say that, but I don't find this comfortable. And when it's empty, it feels fine, but who wants to carry around an empty bag? As soon as I fill it with stuff, it really begins to dig in and hurt. And for that reason, I just don't reach for it. I had originally bought this as more of a travel bag, so going sightseeing and you don't wanna carry something crazy high end, but you still want something that looks quite smart and stylish. Um, but because of you know the chain, I just don't even wanna take this on a holiday with me. So kind of sad, um, but yeah, because of the chain, I just don't ever reach for this. So onto the what fits section now, and I think the easiest and the quickest way of doing this is to fill the bags full, show you the bag full, and then show you what contents fit inside any other way, and I think it's just gonna take too long. So I'm gonna start with the biggest first and then work my way down to the smallest so you can see the gradient. So up first is the Celine Nano. I have filled this full, however, there is a bit more space just because I kind of ran out of things to put in it. You can maybe put a vlogging camera or something like that, but there are a lot of items. Gucci Soho is next, and I fill this full with the exact same items. It is full, but you could still maybe fit in one or two small items in there. And this is the Chloe Drew full. I've had to take out the lip balm and also the larger wallet because neither of these fit in there. And this is it full, maybe a couple more makeup products you could fit in there, but this is pretty much it. Next up is the Gucci Marmont camera bag and I've had to take out the perfume and also the hand cream to get it closed. And this is it full. Now for the Chanel Mini and everything but the compact fit inside. For my Chanel Rectangle Mini, I couldn't fit my sunglasses in. However, I could fit in my compact instead. So it does just seem to depend on what shape your item is. 
And now for my Chanel small flap. I have filled this full. I think it is a bit too much of a squeeze for me, so I probably wouldn't fill it quite as full. I did manage to get my compact and my sunglasses in. Personally, I would take out the sunglasses. I would not carry them in there for a more comfortable fit, but if you wanted to, you could. So here is what fits inside and potentially the sunglasses as well. To get the Fairland Metropolis closed comfortably, I had to leave out my compact and my sunglasses. And this is it full. You could fit a bit more makeup in there, but nothing too bulky. For the Saint Laurent clutch, I have taken out both the card holders because they are quite bulky. This is a slim bag and it also is a wallet on a chain style, so I just put the cards in there. And this is what fits inside. My phone, cash, two cards, a lip gloss and a key holder. And the exact same contents fit inside the Saint Laurent cape bag. Okay, so I've lined the bags up in size order. So it goes from smallest right through to largest, um, right at the Celine Nano. And the Chanel flaps I felt were a little bit interchangeable depending on what shape items you chose, but I kind of put those as all equal-ish. So yeah, that is the final order. So I have three bags here which are joint first because they all score 10 out of 10 for me in terms of wear and tear. So the first one is the Saint Laurent wallet on a chain. Then I have my Chanel mini and then also my Chanel small flap. Both of my Chanel bags have the caviar leather and caviar leather is just very, very durable. Obviously I haven't had this one for very long but judging by other caviar bags in my collection, it's going to age pretty well I think. And my Chanel mini, I I've had for quite a few years. I bought it pre-loved so it was already you know used before that and I've used it a ton since and there is just nothing wrong with it. It has held its shape beautifully I think. There are no scratches. I've had it caught in rain. I wouldn't recommend like dunking it in water but it's just a very durable bag that you're not going to have to worry about. And then the Saint Laurent wallet on chain also has that kind of robust finish where you're not going to be able to really scratch it. You don't have to worry about spills because you can just wipe it clean. Just a very, very easy going bag. So all of these score a 10 out of 10 for me in terms of wear and tear. Trailing my top three is my Celine Nano, which I am rating a 8 out of 10. Not because it's done badly, because it really hasn't, but over time I can imagine it seeing more scratches and marks and things like that. I've had a really good experience with it, so I still think it's a very solid choice in terms of wear and tear, and I know the pebbled leather is even more durable. I liked the look of the smooth leather, um, but so far so good, as I mentioned, a few white marks here and there, and you will be able to scratch it if you tried, but generally a very, very durable, robust bag. Coming in after that, and I don't know whether this is cheating because obviously I haven't used it that much, but I do think this is the type of leather which will age very well. You know, it's quite a structured bag, so I don't think it's going to lose its shape, and the leather does seem to be wipe free as well. So. If wear and tear is all you care about, then this might be a solid choice. Again, I haven't used it a ton because it's very uncomfortable, but it does look to be a very kind of carefree bag and it does have a little feet on the bottom as well to um, protect against the bottom, but it doesn't get a lot of use, so it's kind of a funny one. Not really used it much, but if I did, I imagine that um, it would be totally fine because it's just that kind of leather. Next up is my Saint Laurent cape bag, and I've had this such a short amount of time, I'm a bit hesitant to give it a rating. If I had to, I'd probably say like a seven out of 10, um, just because it does seem pretty durable to me. I can imagine you could get a scratch on here, but I haven't, and the leather looks to be pretty good. You know, you do see those kind of whitish marks, but again, it's a white clean one. So for me, I think this is going to be quite a solid one in terms of aging. I will update you guys if I see anything different, but so far so good for this one. Now for my Gucci Marmont camera bag, and again, this hasn't seen a whole ton of use since I got my other Marmont flat bag. Um, I have used it a little bit and it's done fine. You know, I can't see anything too bad in terms of wear and tear. I have one little crease right there, um, but I don't even know whether I did that. I think it just came with the bag. And so it seems fine. You can see, you know, a few creases here and there, but I do think that is just the nature of the bag. It's small enough that makes me think it's going to hold its shape quite well. So 
I'm going to give this a 7 out of 10, but with the caveat again that I haven't used this for years and years and it could change, but there's been nothing to really cause me alarm. I will say that the inside can get a little bit weathered, I guess, um, but it is also wipeable as well. So I have cleaned all of my Gucci bags on the inside and they've come out really well. So that's something that you have to keep in mind, but it is fixable. So I would say probably a solid 7 out of 10. And then coming in in joint last place for wear and tear is my Chloe Drew and my Gucci Soho. However, I would mention that I don't think either of these bags are particularly bad for wear and tear. They're just the least well-faring of all the bags I mentioned here today. And um, the Chloe Drew is placed in last because one, the leather is quite delicate. So I scratched it, I think in the first week I got it. And since then I've been very, very careful with it, which is why it doesn't have any of the scratches. But the leather is quite prone to scratching and getting nicks. And also the lock as well is very, very prone to scratching even though I've been very careful with it. So this isn't terrible, but you do have to baby it. And so that's why I've kind of ranked it a bit lower. In terms of wear and tear, I'd probably say like a five out of 10. And um, the same as my Gucci Soho, which on the one hand is quite a durable bag. You know, the leather is that kind of pebbled leather, which is quite difficult to scratch. However, on the other hand, I don't think it's held its shape as well as I was expecting. So it has caved in a bit here and also on the back as well, which you can see is quite severe, I think. And I do actually stuff the bag as well. So maybe I don't stuff it that well. I have used this bag a lot as well. So that is something to keep in mind, but I was expecting the shape to do better, which is why I'm also ranking it a five out of 10. So that is it for this video, guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about any of these bags, then leave them for me in the comment section. And if you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. As always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.